Hey everybody, it's Sophie and Marco. Dish out on the movies. And today we're doing a movie review of Haunt. And it is a uh, multiple slasher movie. And uh, it's about a haunted house. And there's a final girl and a final boy. Big surprise. Who did start out the movie with a hat on and then somehow he lost it and, and was hatless. So Is that what you have to say? Well, so far. Okay. So it was it was well. pretty good. It's just that they're all spread out. There's multiple killers. And so there's just multiple things going on. They go from scene to scene to scene and you're like almost in a merry go round going round and round and round. It's really hard to keep track of so there's only there are three girls yeah plus well, the so, final girl. well so let's start off the movie and so we start off and there's a girl and she looks very constipated and she looks very like she is just so constipated she needs professional help <laughs> <laughs> Like, uh, eating some prunes isn't going to do it for her. She needs some real help. And as soon as I saw her, that's when I knew, what? That's the final girl. We both knew it. Yeah. He didn't tell me who. He said he watched it first. It was doing other things. And uh, he, he kept, I heard him go, final girl. And, and no, I, I was like this. Final girl. <laughs> And, I'm like, and so he said, okay, I want you to tell me when you think you see the final girl. And it was yeah. easy because she was wearing a red hoodie. And she looks constipated. And she's boring. She's bland. She's like a piece of fish with no seasoning. She's very and pale. she's like, uh, and it's just, it's bizarre. It's like, it, we just watched Leslie Vernon where, you know, they poked fun at this formula they 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 did all these twists and turns to it. They did all these interesting, clever uh, uh, thing uh, takes on th these this typical slasher formula. And then years later, what do they do? They just make a movie that's completely in formula. So like, as soon as you see this girl, you automatically know she's so boring and bland looking. She has to be the final girl. It can't be her friend. You know why? Why? Because she's black. Uh. <laughs> you can't have can't have a can't have a black final girl these days. You know she has to be a boring, bland, unseasoned piece of fish, and she's got to be constipated. She's got to have the same look on her face the whole movie, just like the the girl in Scream and the gr the shitty girl uh, the grandson in the Halloween movies. You know, so, like, I was like, you know, the black girl, she was, like, a better actress, and I was like, is this gonna be, like, a movie where they finally have a black final girl? And it's like, no, of course not. It's gotta be Lily Collins Jr. Huh. Safi, well, let's she go. Said she was, uh, the African-American girl had on it, like, a cheetah cat outfit with little yeah. cat ears. And she actually started out the movie, and she hears this noise, and you look outside, and these people or persons smash the pumpkins against their door. And uh, she looks, and this truck is pulling away, and she goes up to the boring girl and says, Was that your boyfriend? I'm going to tell him you're breaking up with him. And I'm thinking, like, oh, my God, you're not really going to do that, are She's you? She's got bigger balls than Lily Collins Jr. And so she grabs her phone, and she she t types in a text, it's over. And I was like, wow, her friend has more balls than her. Like, is she going to be the final girl? Oh, no, of course not. And so, basically, it's all about this group of people that goes to this haunt and in the middle of nowhere, kind of, and it's run by this group of masked people. Yeah, well, it's at midnight. They go at, like, midnight. Yeah. And it, it's a good concept for a horror movie. It takes place on Halloween, which is really cool. 
uh, but there's a, there's a lot of problems with the story in general, like, some of the characters make really dumb decisions, that's number one. But number two, like, there's a lot of, like, logistical questions that you have about, like, how could this be accomplished, or it just, it, it didn't seem like it was well thought out. It felt like we had this idea, haunted house in the middle of nowhere, scary, clowns, a uh, group of people, final girl, movie. It didn't feel like they were, like, because if 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 I really picked this movie apart, it would be it would look like a really bad movie. But like I'm I'm not even gonna like fully do that because I, I think the movie's pretty good. It's just like these things that are in it that make me feel like I wish that they moved on from the stupid formula and I wish that they would try something different. And try to do uh, some new things. Well. Because th well, there was nothing new in this story. You know, like there was no new added twists of anything. Uh, except I did like, there was a twist where the masked people at one point, they take off their masks. And they all turn out to be some really monstrous looking people. And I was not expecting that at all. I thought that that was really cool. One of them didn't. He actually was a regular guy. Yeah. And he, but he got killed. They killed him. Yeah. Because he said he didn't want to do it. He thought it, it was just a regular haunted Speak house. Speak up, Sophie. I, I warned he, you yesterday. He thought it was just a regular haunted house in the country, and he was just going to help out. He's one of the people, you know, they have all kinds of actors in these haunted houses and they all do different things and that's what he thought his role was and then he said when they started killing people then that was just too much for him and he wanted to go and he was trying to show them the way out but that's way down down the line but there are so many things going on and it's a very elaborate setup more elaborate than any other because after after a group like let's say the JCs or whatever, the Lions Club or whatever, whoever puts on these haunted houses, they have to take them down after it's over. Yeah. And so this thing was like, it it had, it had to have taken a year to put this together. Uh, there were just so many different points to it, so many different rooms with so many different uh, mechanisms and. Uh, very elaborate. It's a very intricate haunted house. Yes. And the haunted house itself was really cool. Like, I thought, like, you know, I've never been to a haunted house before, but if I went to one, this one would be really cool to go to. In fact, we should talk about the the history of haunted houses with us because it's it's pretty short. You know, we, we, would, do, we would do some haunted houses at home kind of uh where i would do a haunted tree house which was really fun uh, we should have done it a lot a m many more times uh and you know we would invite people over for the party and then at the end of the party when it was like really dark out that's when uh they would go into the haunted house and there were a couple of like issues that happened like it, like remember safi what were some of the issues <coughs> Well, uh, some people that we invited to come, they decided to destroy it all. Yeah, Catherine and Cassie uh, from school, we invited them, and instead of, uh, you know, respecting our property and just respecting, like, the haunted house, they were taking decorations and, like, destroying them and throw it, throwing them on the ground. Yeah, throwing them out of the, the haunted hotel. And I remember thinking, like, God, these these are these are like a couple of gremlins, and like, this is like really bizarre. Like, I've never seen anyone like go to a haunted house before, and their first in instinct is to start like vandalizing the haunted house. I couldn't believe it either, as a mother. Yeah, they they needed a a a, a whooping. Well, if they weren't respecting some uh, per another person's property, and they had been invited to come. They weren't invited to destroy our property. 
And uh, I don't think, is there any other stories from like when we did the haunted house that were, would be interesting to tell? You think, like, were there any other highlight moments that <coughs> you would talk about? No. No? I don't think so. Well, we also went to what Lake of the Ozarks, and we went to this haunted house place. It was also a haunted hotel. And I was really excited to go there. I thought it looked really cool. But then, I got we got there, and I was too scared to go into the haunted hotel... And so Safi and the other person went inside the haunted hotel themselves, and they went through it, and I and I watched the guy like operate these levers and things while they went through it, and he he operated like special levers for like lights and stuff as they went through the whole thing, and uh, yeah, Safi, did you he like was, that one? He was kind of bored. Who? That guy who was doing that. Yeah, he was kind of bored because, you know, no one was coming. And uh, so... He was lucky that we came. Yeah. We'd never done it before, so we decided to do it. We thought Marco might want to do it, but he didn't want to. It was too scary. I didn't want to force him to do that. So... Even though, like, all it turned out to be, I I remember, is that... It wasn't that big of a deal. No, all, all I can remember that you said that it was was, like... You looked through, like, uh, door holes, and you saw, like, gross scenes in, like, hotel rooms or something? Yeah. Yeah. If I had known it was that, I would have gone inside. It was a permanent place. So this is open. It wasn't just Halloween or something. It was open year-round. Yeah. Because we went during, like, vacation season. We didn't go. It wasn't Halloween. Speak up, Safi. I am, Marco. You want me to start yelling? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, I don't know how much you want to tell because it's just so... Well, it's it's very complicated, it like, is. going through these traps and things. There's and... a lot of traps. It's like Jigsaw, almost. With yeah, the the, traps. It, it, like, the opening scene is just them setting up traps and, yeah. like, just getting it all set up and... The opening reminded me of a Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, the opening scene to that where Freddy Krueger is uh, building his, his glove. So I thought that that was cool. Well, what what you don't expect is there are multiple killers. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, you, it, you don't know what to expect. I didn't know no. this was going to be a haunted house. I did. In the country. And, uh... So, and they each wear a clown mask, and they're, they're not well, the same. Not really, like, not all of them wore a clown mask. Most of them. Most of them, and I really like the tone of the movie, though. It had a very intense tone. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, the story and the script did not live up to the tone. It felt like the tone was like, for like a really like a perfect horror movie but then the story it needed some tinkering because there are a lot of questions that you have after watching this movie and what would some of those questions be well they start off and they're going through the haunted house and they get to this part where they see this witch and she's uh she's branding a, a, a victim and you think that it's just an actor or something but no it's actually a, a, a victim of like a real person that they've captured but one of the biggest like plot holes is like so you're saying that what if nobody showed up that <laughs> night you know like would they just keep that girl there and have to keep on keeping her alive until they can use her in a haunt like, it, it really seemed, like, too contrived the way that they were just so ready for this group of people to be there. And you think about how intricate this thing is, and the fact that, like, the amount of setup and, and redecorating and everything that you'd have to do is really, really a lot. I mean, especially after people start destroying things because they're trying to escape... Like, it, uh, all the traps, the shotgun and everything, like, that would take a lot of stuff to, uh, a lot of time to 
redo that. It right, Sophie? Well, it could be that they had decided ahead of time that they wanted a group of multiple people. Now, when you say multiple people, how many people is multiple? And so there were like four girls and two boys. So it's six people. So maybe they thought ahead of time, as soon as we have a group of six people, we're gonna shut it down and not do it anymore. Because when they, when they pulled up, there was a clown out in front yeah, he was waiting. He was waiting for them. So, I mean, it was like, so if anybody, if they only planned for like a, one group of people because they were going to make their lives hell and kill them all, they thought, um, after those six came, they would shut it down. And anybody new coming wouldn't be able to get in to the house. The, the, it would be closed for the night. And then you'd have these people going through the house and without any interruptions, just trying to, to fight for their lives. <laughs> yeah. Well, I really felt like, I, at, at some point, I was expecting for the house to be revealed as, like, the plan of a certain character or something, because it just seemed too perfect. It seemed like it could have been a little bit more, like, believable if if it was like specifically targeting them or something because you just think about if if they were just running this haunted house and just wanting wanting to kill groups of people over and over have fun whatever they'd have to do a lot of work to to get that to happen you know Leslie Vernon I don't think that even he would be able to accomplish that with all the, all the prep time that he needed. Well, and they, they had to have multiple killers. Yeah. Because there were so many rooms. Yeah. So many traps uh, that one person would, there's no way one person could do all that. Not even two. Because remember, there's a helper who decides to back out and they kill him. So, uh, was, I mean, this is like multiple. I wrote everything down. Don't ask me why, but I mean, it's just because I, I forget and I'm like trying to keep, and I, it was really, it was like on a merry-go-round going pretty fast <laughs> and it was really hard to keep track of everything. I, I kept having to stop the movie and watch again because sometimes I'm like, what just happened and a few times? And, uh. Because it would get real dark, it was hard to see. At one time, the final girl, I don't know, there's like a lamp, and then there's this bucket hanging from the ceiling, and she had to reach in, and there was no one, I didn't see any instructions anywhere, how she decided she was going to do that. And then, of course, it's tied up to the ceiling, so she reaches in, that something grows, maybe Marco knows what it is, and she gets flashlight out. Oh, I didn't know what the gross stuff was, but I, I, yeah. I again, I really love the haunted house in general. Like they did a great job with like making it look like a haunted house that you want to go to, and you know all the different environments. Like they had, I think that my favorite room was probably the chainsaw one, where that guy with the chainsaw was getting at them, and and uh. Then they had they had to push him, and you know he was just really creepy. You know, usually when you get when you have like a um, a chainsaw guy at a haunted house, they're known for being really loud and really like ah. He doesn't do that. But he's not like that at all. He's very quiet, and he's just like he's he's a lot creepier in my opinion. And so I I like that room a lot, and. Uh, there are a lot of good things that we can say about the movie. All right, Safi, go say more good things. Say like Well, what, she goes into a bedroom with dolls. Oh, yeah, that was a good room too. And the, the escape room. And I don't know where she she gets a red compact because the, they had written secret messages all over the room backwards. And you had to have a compact with a mirror this is what a compact was like, a mirror and powder, you know. And uh, you, they, he, she had to turn around, turn her back to all the messages using the compact to read them. 
because they were all written backwards and you could only see them printed right way if you looked at them in a compact. Which reminds me of something I, I, I know. It's one of those ghost books I read this summer. One of those witchy ghost books. Yes, she would fail the test <laughs> on Facebook. This con The constipated girl. She would fail that test. You know what test I'm talking about, Safi? No. You know, there's always that one person on Facebook who never, like, posts anything interesting. They just post, like, random shitty pictures of things that, like, uh, and, like, memes and things. And, like, one of the pictures that you all, you'll always see posted is you'll, you'll, they'll show some, like, backwards writing. And then they'll say, if you can't read this, you're an idiot or something. Right. And so, like. The, the constipated girl would fail that test. She would not be able to read the backwards text on Facebook. She she but she needs to figure out her constipation now. Right, Safi? I mean what did you think? I mean didn't she have like a weird look on her face well, the whole she, movie? Like I don't come know, something on. Something happened with her parents and I think her father killed her mother. And then I think her... No, she sees her mom at the end. <coughs> That's a dream. Oh, yeah. And, uh... Because she, <laughs> she wakes up... Whoops. She wakes up and she's in the hospital. And, of course, she had been through one of these traps and her... Besides getting a six-inch nail ramming through her foot, because there was nails everywhere. Like I said, there were tra there were knives in this ha hanging from the ceiling... There were nails on all over the floor, sticking up like from a board. And uh, then there was some kind of hot thing where she put her hands down and her hands stuck to it. And when she pulled them up, they, I mean, it pulled the skin off. Yeah. And so she woke up and, well, and there also, I'll just tell you this last thing. She, she still had the flashlight at this point. She shines it up to the ceiling. Well, there's a cord. She's real smart about looking and anticipating, trying to anticipate anyway, the traps. And she sees this rope strung all the way across the ceiling and knows that it must be connected to something bad. So when she's tr trying to escape the room after she rips her hands off of this whatever it was and rams a nail through her foot, she has to crawl really fast, and then that person, one of the clowns, cut the rope, and this thing, like a guillotine with serrated, sharp, metallic blades, not one big fat blade, but like a, a saw, a giant saw with big uh, uh, triangular blades, comes slamming down, almost cutting off her legs off. But she makes it through. But anyway, that's what this room was like. But anyway, she she <coughs> was in the hospital and she had this dream. And in the dream, she sees her mother and hugs her. And uh, it, her, nothing's wrong with her hands. And I think, like, what's going on here? She messed up her hands really bad. And so she wakes up and she's in a hospital bed with bandaged up hands. So, And the guy who is with her, the hatless guy... Well, let's let's talk about him because earlier on in the movie, she does go through with breaking up with her abusive boyfriend. And by the way, like some of the dialogue in this movie is bad because uh, her her friend, who's black, uh, she's <laughs> she's like, uh, well, I'm saying that because you know she's gonna die at some point, and uh, but it's a surprise. Not because, really. Well, it's she's, surprising she that says she that, disappears for a long time. She says that, uh, she says your boyfriend's abusive, and, and she's like, yeah, but he's alcoholic. Yeah, she kept saying that. <laughs> he's an like, alcoholic. That's not an excuse. It really isn't. And, the, and, and I, I really hate this thing in movies because they, they never realize when they do this, but it's just like with the Friday the 13th remake. You know, where you had that girl who was the girlfriend of Trent in Friday the 13th, the remake. And she's like this nice girl, and she's with that supernatural guy the whole movie. And it's like, but it really reflects on her character that she got with Trent in the first place. 
and it reflects on the constipated girl that she got with that guy in the first place, the alcoholic abuser. Like, that guy, too, like, he looked almost as creepy as the clown people. Oh, I know. Right? I know. Because he, well, that's all elaborate, too. They all, at the beginning, I didn't say this, but at the beginning of the haunted house, they all have to give up their phones. And they take the phones, one of the clowns. And he, he destroys them, he most of them. Weird, but, but he he puts them in the microwave and fries them. Okay. And then, but he kept the one that belonged to Harper, the final girl. Yeah, the, the, the constipated it's, girl. It's red. It's a red colored phone. So, I don't know if she, if he knew who it belonged to or what. But I don't he, know. He kept that out. And the hatless guy and her boyfriend had been trying to call her and want to know where she was. And um, as the hatless guy was running around by himself trying to escape being killed, he found the phone and he did something with the locator on it. So that boyfriend who had called would know where they were. So. Yeah, and so as, as I was saying before, <coughs> uh, she's at this Halloween party with her friend, and she actually meets this uh, guy. And I just wanted to talk about this guy because Safi, he was like a weird breed of different actors from the 90s or whatever. Like, he looked like Freddie Prince Jr. with the fucking backwards hat. He looked like Sam Witwer, and he looked like Sam Rockwell, like just mixed into one person. And it was really weird to look at him, because he just looked like a, an AI configuration of these different actors smushed it together. Did, don't you agree? Like, didn't he look like, with the backwards hat, like Freddie Prince Jr.? Do you think that they did that on purpose? I, I didn't know what I didn't know what he was doing. I thought he might be a bad person, disguised as a good person. <coughs> but he actually he tried to help everybody in the group. And what had happened to him? He was some kind of baseball player or something. He got his face smashed in, and so he couldn't do it anymore. He had a fractured face. That's what he said. So. Yeah, he, he was a, he was a pretty good character. I liked him. It's just. It was kind of funny to look at him. <coughs> well, I just didn't know what to think about him because, you know, you know you've already seen who the final girl is probably going to be. Yeah. And usually, most of the time, it's just usually a final girl. But now there's been a few times where it's been a kid. Well, no, I think a, a I think a lot of the times, though, you're missing the, <coughs> the fact that, like, a lot of the times it's a final girl... And her love interest, you know, like in House of Wax, <coughs> the original House of Wax, yeah, you know, where the boyfriend comes in at the end and saves her from Charles Bronson, <laughs> right? I, yeah. Remember, yeah. we reviewed that movie. I know, but I just, I what I what? do, I watch a movie, and unless it's outstanding, I put it on a shelf in my brain and file it a away. A shelf. Yeah. What kind of shelf? I don't know. A I shelf where... A, an imaginary shelf, and I file it away. Is it a shelf where they have the laxatives that this final girl needs? <laughs> well, I just... I, unless it's outstanding, I probably don't watch it ever again. So, yeah. That's uh That movie was... It was not outstanding. Well, I, I would watch but this movie... Okay. I would watch... Well, it was okay to you. I would watch it again. This movie? Not... Not uh, soon, though. Like, well, it's very. I mean, it's it it'll wear you down. Well, it's it's predictable. I mean, you know who's gonna survive. I mean, I know that, but they the, the fat they, guy. You know, let's talk about the fat guy too. Well, he's you you big. Fin he's just a big big. You guy. you finish up what you were saying, and then I'll talk about the fat guy because I'm I'm it, sick and tired of this shit. Okay, well, it's just it's just. He's, there's two guys, the, hat, the, the guy with the hat and the fractured face, and then this other really huge guy who's kind of a jerk. And what? Mean. What? He's, well, he starts out as a jerk. I mean, remember he, at the bar, he did something and got a drink all over in that girl's face, the uh, final girl. Don't you remember that? 
I don't know what he did. Well, yeah, he he. Well, that was an accident, though. He was mad about something, and he just threw a drink, and it just happened to splatter on her face. And since she's the poor, pretty final girl, she can't handle it. <laughs> Freddie Prince Jr. has to protect her poo, and uh, well, it's like. God, I, her character, like, can't you write a final girl that's actually, like, a, a good character? Like, what is it with this, like, boring, like, just... <laughs> like, God, add some butter to her, add some seasoning, add some sauce, add something to make her taste good! <laughs> right, Safi? I mean, we rate things in terms of food, and her character had nothing. It, it, it's like in comparison to that girl from the Leslie Vernon movie, it's like, wow. Yeah. Wow. She's very bland. And let's talk about the fat guy, because as soon as you saw that guy wearing the human centipede outfit, you knew that they were going to make him into a joke and he was going to get killed. But there was a little bit of hope, because at a certain point, he meets, well, they all, like, encounter this guy who talks, and, uh, he actually is, like, he's, he says that he's gonna help them and everything, and it turns out to be a trick, and it ends up where him and that other guy are outside, and then the fat guy gets killed, like, really easily, and one of the things that I didn't like about the movie was that a lot of the times when people got killed... They didn't show it. They did not show it, At and all. they kind of, like, cut around in, like, really quick way. Well, I think they edited it out. Yeah. And they they would show the end, and I'm like, well, did I just miss something? I've been <laughs> trying to watch this movie closely. I'll stop it. i rewind a little bit. And, I'm like, a few times I'm like, what happened here? You know, you saw the guy, the big guy he's talking about, standing there, and the guy who's going to help him, he had a white robe on. It's like a sheet but had a hood, and he had a mask, and his name was Mitch, and the way he talked, he talked like, you know, he didn't have a scary voice, he had a friendly voice, Yeah. and so I think that's why they all trusted him and thought he was trying to help them, which he wasn't. No. And uh, so anyway, uh, the big guy says, well, where is everybody? And he said, oh, they're coming, and then somehow... You, then the next moment, you look, and the big guy's on the floor. Yeah, well, he's Already, on the ground. He's dead. And I just, I hated that. I was like, what happened? No, I thought I missed something. And I, it, it happened no. several times. They cut away. So that was really disappointing. Like, I, I really didn't like it when they did that. And then next thing you know... The guy, like, pulls his face up or something. He, he like, rips his face open. So. I don't know. And then the guy with the big red hood. He's a really big guy. He grabs. <laughs> he grabs <laughs> he's a really he big after, guy. He goes after the two girls, the African-American girl and the girl who's dressed up as a nurse. And I was so disappointed in the black girl because... She reaches into this hole to get, like, a ring that she lost in, like, this cool little, like, hole game that they play. It's a hole game uh, that they play. And and uh, she gets, like, her arm cut into. And so most of this movie she spends just, like, bleeding like a victim. Like, just sitting around, like, being tired and just being a victim. And she doesn't do anything. Yeah, she hardly does anything. She gets taken out really quick. Well, no, she disappears for a long time, so you assume she's already been taken out. Oh, well, I mean, she gets taken out of the movie. Like, it's like you don't get to follow oh. her. No, you don't, because she... What happens is they have that guy with the black hood, and he's carrying a scythe. The red hood. No, he's carrying a pitch pitchfork. Yeah, Sorry. with a pitchfork, yeah. And, uh... So they have to go down this tunnel, and but you can only go one at a time because apparently Mitch tells them that it's going to collapse or something in the middle. Somehow they come up with the idea that it's, they, they all can't go at the same time. It can only be one, and then when they're done, they have to knock on the edge of the tunnel to let the next person go. <coughs> <coughs> and, 
what happens with that. The big guy goes through, makes it through fine. He knocks on the tunnel, and then Mitch goes through. And he gets done, but he doesn't knock to let them know. He nails it shut. And then uh, the next guy is the hat guy. And he goes through, and of course he finds it shut. And then what happens is, in that foyer with the tunnel, and there's some other doors, the final girl standing by this other door, she had a key for, but she didn't open it. She just unlocked it, but she didn't open it. I mean, she hears this noise, and she tells the girls to run, go. And so uh, here he comes, He th uh, the red-robed guy, throws open the door, he's carrying a, ah! carrying a big uh, pitchfork, and so the girls are hurriedly, not the, uh, the, the final girl got knocked to the floor, because the guy opened it so quick, he knocked her over. And so, the, the African-American girl, she's first, well, she gets through, and then the, the girl after her, he grabs her, and then he pitchforks her in the head, which was pleasant, not... And one one of the things that I really didn't like about like the characters in this situation was they really t trusted that guy fast. Like they were like, you know what? And I'm like, after, why did they do that? Yeah, after all this crazy shit that started <laughs> to happen, after you know we've been made really uncomfortable, and like this is clearly not just a haunted house. All of a sudden, they start trusting that guy, and yeah, and and. I thought that it was stupid because they didn't even listen to the clown's directions at the beginning of the movie where one of the rules was that you had to listen to the actors or I mean whatever their directions because it was a part of like the show and so like you could clearly tell that that guy he was an actor and well he was a killer and so, like, that was a part of the show. The whole thing where he's pretending like he's going to help them. That was a part of the, the plan. So, like, I didn't understand why they trusted him so fast. Because if I were them, you know, I would have probably, like, tortured him until he let me out. Well, another you know, thing, like, too. He gave the final girl ring of keys. Yeah. And I, what was that about? That, the, Did those really work? They ne they were never used on, like, anything, basically. <laughs> a couple things, she, but they didn't really... One time, she didn't use it. Yeah. Another time, it didn't work. Or yeah. she gave up. Because yeah. Because there's this, like, a huge ring of keys. She kept on giving up, too, like, in really convenient situations. She'd be like, oh, wait a second, that's not the smart thing to do. I should do this instead. And, <laughs> you know, like, it it got really convenient for her near the end. To where it was the typical, like, final girl syndrome thing. Where near the end, shit hits the fan. And she she's able to just, like, get all these guys, like, exactly the way that she needs to. You know, like, she, if she needs to stab someone, she can stab really precisely right where she needs to stab if she needs to, like, uh, shoot someone, she's able to do that, too. Like, it was just so convenient for her, the way that she was able to uh, defeat all these characters. What do you think, Safi? Well, I, I, I was thinking, well, maybe because of what happened with their parents. Oh. That's the only thing I could think of, that, <laughs> that that's why she was so able in defending herself. But you, you would admit that that's true, that, like, she really, it was, like, really easy for her to defeat these people. Well, she seemed to know, she didn't seem to be shy about knowing or trying to do whatever with whatever she found, but she couldn't, she didn't know how to use a set of keys. No. And I don't know if the keys really were meant to be helpful or it was just a red herring or a bunch of red herrings. Uh, I just wanted to say, though, when that girl was pulled out of the tunnel and stabbed, well, the African-American girl, she was way down in it, and then you don't see her until the end of the movie. Oh, yeah. So they, I thought she was dead. They bring her back, and they do this thing where they dress her up like she's one of them, and then they, they push her into this tunnel area, and uh, the final girl stabs her on accident. 
because she takes off her mask and she finds out it's her friend. Well, really, it's her roommate. That was terrible because I was like, mm -hmm. God, that actress really just got like the worst character. Like she she <laughs> she got nothing. Like she got nothing to do in that movie. She she got to sit, sit around and then die. <laughs> yeah, because like we said, after she did this test, she had to stick your arm in and guess the body part. It's a very common game, like in children's parties. I, when I, I took my uh, first boy, went to a Goosebumps party at a bookstore, and uh, they had that. That was part of the party, to do this thing, and you know, you feel something, and, and they say, this is a bunch of worms, and it's spaghetti noodles. And then you felt, you, and then you felt like these two little things and you're like, and you were like, what was that? And it's like, oh, that's Earl Stein's balls, and he let us, Marco. he let Scholastic cut them off when they censored all his books. This was a million <laughs> years ago. It was when the Goosebumps books were, you know, had only been out, whatever, the last few years. But anyway, um, you know, uh, that's so she stuck. The other people stuck their arms in, and it was no big deal. I think there were two other people who did that. And then it was her turn. She stuck her arm in and said, there's nothing in there. And then she had a ring on and it fell off. And she heard, you could hear it. Everybody could hear the ring fall on the ground. And so uh, they were trying to, the guy was trying to help her get it. And she ended up, she was in severe pain because well, whoever it was back there stabbed her in the arm. I didn't know what had happened. Marco told me. So, but she was in su she was in such bad pain, though Marco said she just sat there. <laughs> so for for yeah. one big part of the movie, she just sat there. Yeah. While they figured everything out. I I hope that the food on set was good, I guess, like cuz like she got nothing out of this movie. <laughs> and then the other time, she just disappears completely until almost the very end of the movie. So, well, anyways, it ends up to where her and the, the boyfriend survive, but there is kind of a little red herring where the abusive boyfriend, uh, Freddie Prince Jr., he sends the abusive boyfriend their location, uh, and he's, he was really lucky to be able to do that. I don't know why he didn't just dial the police. I don't either. And, uh, and he, he also, <laughs> he did a big favor for them. He left his truck out in the road he left the door open for some reason and or yeah and, that was like with dark winds where they left the keys in and the left, police car he left the keys in the car yeah you know, i've been reading those books and he still jim g especially still leaves his firearm in the vehicle in the glove compartment Really? Not the only thing. It, multiple books. Well, anyways, this abusive boyfriend, he goes to the haunted house and predictably he gets killed. Immediately. Immediately. And uh, I guess that that was okay because it's like, oh, yay, the abusive boyfriend got killed. Yay. But, like. But he left them a means to escape. Yeah. Because what happened was the original vehicle they were in. One of the clown guys came out there, smashed in the window, and found the keys. They were up above the um, the uh, visor, behind the visor, and he took them. So they had no they had no keys. And so, if the boyfriend hadn't uh, done that, they wouldn't have been able to drive off. So, want to say anything more about? <coughs> The movie? Yeah. Um, well, overall, I would say it was enjoyable, but it it's just, you know, as, as I put in the thumbnail, back to formula. Remember that in Spider-Man? Yeah. And it's, Green it, Goblin? It's also... Or he was like... It's also like doing homework. Back to formula? <laughs> well, to me, it was like homework. Because, I mean, there were so many people to keep track of, because they all got split up somehow and then 
I was writing down, okay, that person's dead, that person's dead, that person's dead. Who's left? And they're still way apart from each other. And uh, somehow the guy with the hat, he was able to escape He and without doing anything, much of anything. Yeah. He was just able to get away. and I, I He got out know. really fast. Yeah, he did. So, in fact, wasn't he out completely outside the building? Outside? Yeah, he was That's out enough. in the fucking parking lot. And then he went back in. Yeah, to get uh, the final girl. Right. And uh, hopefully he took her to CVS and got her some laxatives. <laughs> I think she probably got that in the hospital. Anyway. So. What they, would you What would you give the movie? Well, actually, we should also say like the only thing interesting about. Well, no, you have, you have to say the end. Well, the, well, okay. Well, There's you you one more thing. you you can say that after I'm done saying what I'm gonna say. Okay. There was only there was one really interesting thing about her character that they didn't explore at all, and that was that she's like, I used to live in a haunted house growing up. I loved it, and I hated it. <laughs> that was the line. I loved it, <coughs> and I hated it, <coughs> and. uh they never explored that at all. Like, that, that that was, like, a really cool concept, I guess, that, like, she lived in a haunted house, and now she goes to a haunted house with killers. Like, that's cool. But they never explored that. They never had any creepy flashbacks of, like... I was going like, to say, they could have done flashbacks. Yeah, like, the only thing that they had a flashback of was, like, her abusive father or something. Like, Well, that was her having a dream. Well, that I'm well, well. No, they had other another flashback earlier in the movie. I think. It must have happened in the bedroom then. And uh, you know, it was not showing that the house was haunted though, so like that was totally like an unexplored detail of the movie. And uh, Sophie, talk about the ending where the the killer becomes the killed, or the hunter becomes the hunted. Well, you know. To get out of the hospital, or at least she gets out before him. He got shot by one of the clown people at the end outside. One of them had a pistol, and he was shooting at everybody. And uh, he managed to shoot him, but then the hat guy got him. He st- he stabbed him or something with the pitchfork or something. I can't remember. And uh, anyway, he went to the hospital. And the girl gets out first because she basically has had a nail in her foot and I told you she did something terrible to her hands. So she goes home and then a clown, one of those clown people comes there, they have their clown mask on and tries to get her but she's got a rifle or a shotgun or something and she shoots him and kills him. Well yeah, she traps him and so... There was yeah. something to that, like, I guess, like, the fact that they, you know, trapped the bad guy at the end, you know, because he came to their house because he knew where they all lived, like, that was a, a good idea, but, like, they only spent, like, one minute of the, of the movie on that. Yeah, uh, he, at one point, the big guy says, I just want to go home, and the guy says, you mean it, something, he gives an address. So they had looked through their phones or something and found out where they had all lived. (coughs) Where she lived. And she said, too, at the end, her last words were, take off your mask. And that that would have been a pretty cool thing for them to do if they spent, like, 30 minutes on that. Like, the end of the movie. Like, but then you could have said, well, this is very similar to Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, where... Nancy rigs up her home with booby traps and Freddy Krueger gets fucked up by the booby traps but still it would have been something better than like just being kind of predictable and then having that one minute thing at the end because it was very rushed you know that ending part where because I thought almost like is this a dream is this a fantasy or something because it it just it felt like too perfect like it was like really well fast uh, plus the fact they had had that little dream sequence in the hospital and that was real fast too yeah so that's why it was almost unbelievable and i said well maybe they'll put something in the post credits but they didn't 
So anyway, I, I think I just give it up the spaghetti that we made yesterday. Really soft? There's so many parts to it. Really? You get, all, you get the tomatoes. I'm basically giving the recipe. You get the tomatoes and the tomato sauce and tomato paste. And the tomatoes have to be crunched up because they're whole peeled. Okay. Then you get uh, like a half a pound of ground beef. And you get uh, one sauce, one mild Italian sausage. You crunch all that up. And you have to cut up an onion. And Marco did just about all of this and so you start cooking the meat and you put the onion in you cook that with the meat you dump that into that sauce mixture and then you get the spices and that's basil and parsley and uh, cayenne pepper and uh, those licorice seeds which I can't <coughs> and seeds sorry uh, bay a couple of bay leaves, and I think I got, oh, and oregano, of course, the magic spice from Mandy Griffith, and um, you put all that in, and then, um, then you have to get two spicy sausages, I mean, the real spiciest Italian sausages you can get, you fry those in a special way, and then you have to cut them, and then you fry, and not, you don't want them getting done yet then you have to fry them in pieces on each side and then you put all that in and then it has to cook all day or cook you know like four hours or something I guess you I There's guess a lot of pieces to it and I guess you could say if, if you got one of them wrong it would kind of ruin the dish yeah because you could do that it would ruin the dish if you don't do the Italian sausage right it will ruin the dish like oh yeah it will t you could taste if it gets burned or there's too many hot, uh, hot Italian pieces in there. It's too spicy. <coughs> so, well, all of my point is, it turns out pretty good. It's just there's a lot of pieces, and you have to make sure they're all right. And in this movie, there were so many different. Well, there, there's six characters, which isn't a lot, but there's three or four serial killers. And you know, it's and they're all all over the house, and they're all in different places. They all get first. It was they were split up into two groups, and then they all got split up into individuals. And you know, you just if keeping track of it, I have kind of a headache trying to keep track of all that. Well, you just have to have fun with it and let the movie happen. You yeah, know. it's just just trying to keep track and I make mean, sure you have everything. Cause well, like, that one. Guy, I I like disagree. Well, I, I kind of disagree because you know you know the final girl's going to survive. So like, yeah, but I didn't know that hat guy would survive. Oh yeah, you did. He no, was the I didn't. he was the boyfriend of the hat girl or the the wannabe boyfriend. Wanna so be. he had to survive <laughs> so that he could be with her. And I didn't know her abusive boyfriend who went out looking for her like he's going to probably punish her or something. Yeah, he saved their lives indirectly. By having his tr leaving his truck there and leaving the keys in it. Yeah. And if it wasn't for that, I mean, it would have been hard for, harder for them to get. I mean, they went to the hospital. They went straight to the hospital. So, anyway, wait a minute. Maybe that, maybe at the end, the place where the guy showed up, the clam, maybe that was her old house. It was, that Sophie. That was the point. Well, she lived in another place with a roommate. That wasn't a regular house. No, this was the old lived. house. Like, yeah. the point was that, like, oh, now the the killer comes to the, the her haunted house. That's the point. Yeah. Sophie. So, what's your review? Well, I just would give it, like, a bag of candy that you get after trick or treat trick-or-treating. Well, that's and a good idea. But I, because I feel like... There's a lot of good things in it, but nobody thinks about, like, when they go trick-or-treating, what they're going to end up with afterwards. Because the last time I went trick-or-treating, there were a lot of, like, crappy things in that bag of candy. Like, there were tons and tons of pieces of expired double-bubble 
gum. And that stuff is hard as a rock. That stuff, it's terrible. I don't understand why they put that shit in the candy uh, bags of children. And so I... just throw them away. I, I don't eat that. And then uh, this one woman gave me a fruit chews after she called me Marley the Magician. And <laughs> remember that, Safi? Yeah, I do. Did, did I tell you about Marley the Magician? Something about an old book she had read or movie she had seen or something. Well, no, like, I dressed up as Dracula, and oh. and we opened this, this woman's door. She opened it, and it was, like, this old woman, and she had, like, this huge, like, bookshelf, and it was, like, this huge place, and and she thought that I was someone called Marley the Magician. And so she called me Marley the Magician. Did we find out what and, that's from? No. Because I thought we did. And then she gave me fruit chews. And it's like, thanks a lot, <laughs> boomer. And, uh... No, she was older than a boomer. But you, you get this, this candy and stuff, and it's like, at the end, you have to sort it out and really go through it and be like, oh, I'm not going to eat that, or, oh, I want that, or I don't want that. So what I did was... I traded a lot of, like, the Snickers, because I do not like Snickers. I traded those for the Reese's Cups. but it, So that's what this movie is. It's like, it's good, but it needs some tinkering. And it needs, you need to trade some of the candy and everything. So that's what I would give it. All right. Well, so that's it for the day. I don't know what our next movie is yet, but we'll be doing another review tomorrow. And then guess what Friday is? Oh, yeah, that's Thursday is what? Hell's Kitchen, right? Yeah. Friday is, um, Hell's, oh, Wednesday Hell's is Kitchen. Chucky. Wednesday is Chucky. Thursday is Hell's Kitchen. And Friday is another Goosebumps episode. Ew. So, I hope you like this video. And please give it a thumbs up and become one of our subscribers so we can hear your feedback about what you're watching and what you think about these things. Have you seen this movie? What did you think about it? So, goodbye, everybody. Bye.